Um, right. I know I'm a bit late on this one, but I'm not because I wanted some of the heat to die down before I covered this. Because I have an opinion that isn't exactly... one that a lot of people are going to agree with but when I explain why I have that opinion you might understand where I'm coming from now the topic of conversation is should rape victims be believed and my answer is no not all now a lot of people are going to be going hey, hey, hey. let me explain why I think that way for those that don't know me hi I'm Simone I have a degree in forensic science and criminology as a result, I am trained when people say that they are raped, that I look at the evidence and that I look at the testimonies of all the people involved and that's how I figure out if people have been raped or not. There are people in my real life um, that I believe wholeheartedly because what they say makes sense, never changes, those things I'm going to get into. But when you are talking about rape, it is a very, very touchy subject um, because you have a lot of people that are saying I was raped that aren't believed and then you have a lot of people saying that I was raped that are believed but turn out that they haven't and literally what I'm going to do is I am going to put in the description below I'm going to put the URL for a search result for all the videos of people of covering cases where people have false to the claim that they've been raped So, but because of my training in forensic science, I don't, I go in saying, right, you have to prove to me that you've been raped. It's just, it's just the training. Unfortunately, it's just the training. It is literally just my training that I'm trained that way. I'm trained that when I look at a rape case, that I then figure out if, I'm going to get to the questions. I'm, I, I use what I've been trained to figure out if people have been raped. Now, if you personally know the person and you know that they will lie, then that it does make it a little bit more believable. Like the people in my real life, I know for a fact they wouldn't lie about shit like this. So I believe them. But if it was somebody that I was removed from that I didn't know, I would literally say to, to them, you have to prove to me that you've been raped. There are other th issues, and I'll get to them in a second. Um, a quick search of the words lied about rape will reveal cases where people have lied about being raped. Um, there are rules that you have to follow in figuring out if the account's true. People, are tell it, uh, people who are telling the truth will tell the same story time after time. Very true. Nothing will change. They will not alter their story and in the last 12 months there was two very famous cases um, of people that said they'd been raped and it turned out they didn't um, there was a girl called Brenda Rochelle Harmon who ran into a church saying she'd been that three African American males had abducted and raped her but within days the police knew something didn't add up and she admitted that she had lied about the case then there is another case, and I've seen two examples of this. One Phil covered, the other one, I don't know if he covered it or not. Uh, but when I was looking for the other one, I found the, the, the case that I'm actually going to cover. Um, I didn't get a name, um, because I didn't want to put her on blast. But the police pulled over an African-American lady, and because she didn't like the way um, they handled it, instead of giving her a warning, they arrested her. Um, she then afterwards turned around and said, you sexually assaulted me, whether it was molestation or actual rape, I can't remember. And then the police actually released the body cam footage, which actually showed um, the dash cam footage and the footage in the police stations to actually show that she'd been treated with the utmost respect the whole way through. But because she'd been arrested, she turned around and said, you raped me. Uh, these cases were done doesn't literally you just need to search it and you get thousands if not hundreds of thousands of examples of this and I'll explain a case that I was taught at university without going into specifics a girl had gone to a club she got in the inside saying gone home 
The next day, she then turned around and said that the taxi driver had followed her into the house and attacked her. But then when police actually looked at the case, some of the things that she was stating were physically impossible. And when I say physically impossible, I mean physically impossible. And literally would never happen. And eventually she admitted that she lied. Um, there have been cases in this country where people have lied and they've been prosecuted for it and in America. And people who lie about rape makes it worse for people that have been raped that want to be believed to be believed and these are three rules that i was taught by one of my lecturers at university anthony you're awesome thank you um does it make sense does the account make sense plain and simple does it read like something that could happen is it physically possible um i won't go into specifics but let's just say if you, the body's in a certain angle and something supposedly happens and i'm using this as an example is that physically possible where the angle is and in, in the case that i was taught at university the answer was no um and is there evidence now i know not all cases is going to have evidence because some of it is historic but still even if it's text messages even if it's um somebody saying oh yeah somebody slipped to this or yeah somebody gave her this or yeah i saw him take her off so, so and so then yeah that is corroborating evidence um if there if there is a yes to either two or three of the questions then i am inclined to believe them i don't believe believe blindly nobody should false right claims can ruin somebody's life which we've seen online in using rape or child abuse as an insult make make the accuser seem like they are they don't have an argument and used over and over and over again please stop it i've said this before and i'll say it again don't use your rapist or your pedo as an insult like everybody online does <sighs> john tanner and elon musk I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you guys um are other things that makes me more inclined to believe and i'm going to sort of briefly touch on two specific cases one of which i might get a bit of heat for but i'll explain where i'm coming from on that um is if there are multiple victims if there are such as um three or five or more stories and the story is the same and the people have no connection then i'm inclined to believe them um but if there is just one or two yeah so i will use um two people on the one side and one person on the other side the two people on one side Harvey weinstein and bill cosby they had tens if not hundreds of people that said they did this and because every single account was the same and there was um out of court settlements that people knew about it that it was an inside joke that people even <sighs> Seth MacFarlane, I love you to bits, but sometimes people like Seth MacFarlane were trying to tell people, but not outright tell people. And when something like this happens, it's like... <laughs> so I am inclined to believe people like Harvey Weinstein and Bill Cosby are guilty. Sorry. The other side, I'm going to use Michael Jackson as an example. And this might help people understand why he was, he was acquitted. The first case happened, I think it was like early 90s, or it was somewhere in the 90s, where a young lad and his family had accused Michael of interference or molestation. And obviously there were dead positions and this, that and the other, and Michael ended up settling out of court, which happens quite often, because people are like, I want money out of you, so I'm going to say that you raped me, and then afterwards they're going to flip to then, you know, people then use it against them. It's like, well, no. So the depositions and everything were readily available to anybody. Um, you you could file the Freedom of Information Act and get them like this. So when the Naughties case happened, and this will explain why he was acquitted. What um, when the victim was being questioned on the stand, and when people around the victim was being questioned on the stand the only information that they could provide was the exact same information that was in the previous case 
every time they asked for additional info they couldn't give it so what more than likely happened is the first case was like he likes spending time with kids i know let's use and abuse this and try and get money out of him which they did and then somebody else thought oh well you so they got money out of him so let's see if we can get money out of him and in the end the police are saying no we're going to prosecute him they put prosecute him and then they, they're like um but yeah the accusations match with the previous case and a lot of the evidence that they say were found like um child porn mags all over the house never existed because i've looked at the crime scene photos and they're not there I'm, and I'm all about crazy photos from the first, uh, the second case where they said that they found um, child porn stuff all over the house. No, they didn't. Like he's going to have child porn floating around the house when he's got three fucking kids and security people. So, you see what I mean? One case is an example where two people accused him. The second person accused him by using the first person's words. And the other case is you've got tens of people accusing each person and those stories are almost identical and when one case is pressed for additional info they can't give it when the other case is pressed for additional info they can't so and it's like sorry I know a lot of people that makes people cringe and that happens a lot where people will falsely accuse people of rape and it ruins their life which it did for Michael Jackson and then you have people that are allowed to continue to write for years and then when they are they're like no I didn't do it and then they get convicted because it's pretty evident that they did it's like if you have multiple cases and each information is the same we have a famous case in this country called um, Jimmy Savile nastiest person on earth and every single victim of his says the exact same and you're talking about kids that just met him because they thought it was great people that were hospitalized people that were um at risk meaning there were patients that could be abused and nobody believed them so when you have so many people saying the same thing you are inclined to believe them so there are people that rape only a few victims but they are which is where the three questions come in but if most people rape, they rape multiple people. As a person trained in forensic sciences, I don't blindly believe people I don't know. If I know you and I know if you are liable to lie or not, then I make that um, decision on how, how well I know you. Um, what to do if you're molested or raped? Don't wash, don't change your clothes, call the police, do the, any exam that they want even if it's uncomfortable to still do it tell them what happened in as much detail as possible even if it's embarrassing um if you say no at any point then that's rape there is no such thing as you can't rape the willing which relates to david scissorhands who says you can rape the, you can't rape the willing there is no such thing as that people are up for making out but not necessarily up for sex and if you push somebody into sex i'm sorry but that's rape so there you go that's my view on that and i'm probably going to get some hate on this but like i say it's all about if you know the person um education and the case itself people so many people lie in syndrome so many people lie and it makes it worse for a lot of other people so there you go so I'm going to edit these videos now. Well, I'm going to at least edit one and upload it tonight. So stay safe, be good, have fun. Oh, excuse me, and I will see you at the weekend.